Hey everyone, great to be here. Welcome to week one of Let's Apply to College, the boot camp. My name is Aviva Leggett, and I know we've been introduced before, but I will just give you a little bit of background about myself. I am a college counselor. I work with students from all over the United States and all over the world. Um, and I'm also a faculty member at Penn in the Organizational Dynamics Program, so that's like the sociology of business. Uh, I have past admissions experience as Senior Associate Director of Special Programs and Admissions at Wharton, where I oversaw the Leadership in the Business World Pre-College program and served on the undergraduate admissions committee for freshmen and transfers. I'm so happy to be here with you for this boot camp. Um, the reason I wanted to create this boot camp is that I see a need for more affordable advice out there. Um, you know, and I think there's an opportunity for people to support one another and to work together on what is a very challenging process. And I wanna partner with you on that process and be part of your support team as you go forward and go into the different application stages. So I'm very pleased to present the material that I've presented today. Um, you might notice that this recording looks a little bit different from what you experienced last night. And uh, I had the Murphy's Law of Technology problems yesterday. So uh, unfortunately, the recording did not come out. Uh, and I am re-recording this webinar. It's going to have all the same content that you heard before. Uh, the only difference is I'm going to uh, summarize the interview with the college essay guy, Ethan Sawyer who was so kind to appear live on the webinar and I'm glad that most of you had a chance to hear from him directly. So without further ado, let me get into the presentation. I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can uh, take a look. All right, so hit my share screen and hopefully my technology will cooperate a little bit better today. And there we go. So today we're going to talk about how to identify what makes you unique in a very competitive applicant pool. And really we're going to focus on your application strategy, helping you figure out what is that strategy, what comprises a strategy, uh, and how to move forward with that information. So our agenda for today uh, is that we'll talk about what an application strategy is, what it's not. Um, and uh, just a preview of that, or the second bullet point, uh, the application strategy is not your grades and your tests. Your grades and your tests kind of inform which schools are on your school list, which schools will be reaches and matches and safeties, but the scores and the grades are not a strategy, so um, we'll talk about what you can emphasize beyond that. Uh, I'll walk you through a tutorial of Guided Path, which is uh, the college application success portal that I gave you access to. Uh, there was a link you should have received in the email to register. Uh, so if you haven't done that already, make sure to do that. And if you're having problems registering, just send me a note and I'll, I'll get you on your way. Uh, and also you can use school websites for researching. So we'll talk about that. Uh, next, we'll talk about choosing a major and some practical advice for doing so. And you know, the educational goals of your college education are definitely important, but you also wanna think about the practical implications of the major that you choose and also the practical reasons to choose particular majors over others. Then I'll summarize the College Essay Guy interview that we heard last night. Uh, and then we'll talk about next steps for you as you go on your way for this uh, journey. Uh, let's apply to college boot camp. So the application strategy. So basically the application strategy is comprised of three, of three things. The first is a story about who you are as an applicant or as a person. And this is the piece that you want to write about in the common application essay. You wanna select one story from your life that serves as a larger symbolic anecdote about who you are as a person. So that is the application strategy at the heart is the story of who you are as an applicant. And we'll talk about how to get that story as we summarize the college essay guys interview and also as we work on the essay together through this course. 
The second is a clear depiction of your strengths and impact in high school. So these are the kinds of elements you would find on your resume and in your transcript. So um, any leadership positions that you've had in clubs, initiatives you've taken that have improved your school or your community, volunteer work that you've done, and so forth. So those are the strengths that you bring to your application. And as part, and they're an important part of the application strategy. You'll usually list those in the Y College essay and in the resume. Finally, uh, the connection piece between the top two and the colleges is figuring out what is the link between myself and what the college is needing right now. And the best way to convey your application strategy is by grounding it in your past experience and a tie with what you want to do at that particular college. And you'll show this by really researching these colleges in great depth so that you can justify your pathway at these particular colleges. And as I mentioned earlier, your application strategy is not your test scores and your grades. Sure, those are important factors in the admissions decisions, but they're not factors that are going to help you stand out. There's gonna be a lot of students with wonderful test scores and, and wonderful grades who are applying. I don't have to tell you this, um, but that's not how you're gonna differentiate yourself. You don't wanna spin your wheels doing that. Um, at this point, you're probably most of the way through your uh, testing or at least part of the way through or about to take a test uh, and there's only so much you can do to alter your scores at this point uh, so what you really need to be focusing on this summer and beyond is what is your story and what is the unique element that you bring to a college or university and again it is comprised of these three pieces the story the strengths and the tie to the college so how do you find your application strategy? So I have two steps that I'm giving, and of course, I am oversimplifying just a little bit because it, each of these steps has many sub-steps, but just to give you a basic idea of what you need to do to figure out your strategy, you wanna first delve into your personal story and then figure out what strengths you're really bringing to a college. So I, I outlined this chart. This may look familiar if you joined me on my webinar a couple weeks ago. The top half is are those elements that relate to your personal experience. Things about your life that you really can't change. So your demographics, where you grew up, uh, where you live now, what your race is, what your gender is, what your age is. So those things are fairly fixed. They're part of your the overall consideration of the pool. Uh, and there's something that you bring to the table one way or another. So that's the part that you can't change. There's also the other part that you can change that's part of your story, which is your life experience. Whether it's uh, your parents getting divorced, moving around, uh, having different cultural experiences, maybe abroad, uh, facing some kind of adversity. Uh, while there are different kinds of, uh, different levels of, of uh, impact in these life experiences in other words some students have a more difficult childhood than others you still have life experience and that can inform your story and if you have had a very uh, a relatively easy life at this point hopefully you've taken the opportunity to expose yourself to different ways of life different ways of being different kinds of communities that can give you perspective on your own experience as well the second part is uh, your strengths. So that's the bottom half of this chart. So that is your role in your activities, how you've done academically uh, in your classes, and how others in your school community and communities at large have received or perceived your impact. Um, the personal qualities you bring are the, you know, certain flavor or style that you bring to your work. So what's your personality like and how do you contribute to your team in intangible ways? And by team, that could be the organization, that could be the classroom and so forth. So once again, the top half is the story. That's the common app piece. That's the personal piece. And then the bottom half is the strengths piece, the impact. So moving along here. We are going to look at the impact, excuse me, we are going to look at the personal story piece first. And because two participants uh, in this uh, course have selected Wellesley and Stanford as some of their, as some of their favorite schools, I'm going to share that, uh, those schools with you. 
I'm going to share those two schools with you. So uh, there is an applicant here who has applied to Wellesley. She got in, she's going there now. And she tells a story about her move and the challenge that she had with kind of holding on to the past, not only because her childhood home seemed kind of idyllic and wonderful to her through her childlike perspective, but also because her past childhood home represented her life before her big, some big changes. One was a family divorce, the other was her brother moving out, and these were pivotal life experiences for her um, and really shaped the way that she views the world. So that was her common app essay. And the key part of this is not only that she told a story, but she also shared what she learned. And you can see a piece of that in the, the last paragraph below to talk about, you know, really what is her reflection on this experience that she's had? Not just that there's been an experience, but what does she take away from that? So the key piece is that it's really personal. And the other key piece is that she learned something from that experience. The second student is a Stanford student. She was admitted to Stanford, she goes there now. Uh, and she talks about being named Muse and discovering uh, the uh, love of opera, despite the fact that she's not a singer. Um, and she really talks about this kind of intellectual um, immersion that she goes through in learning about opera and figuring out you know, what, what it's all about, what the different elements are. She takes this interest or passion, if you will, so far that she actually ends up at the LA Opera where she eventually becomes an intern having served a variety of roles uh, at the opera. So the key pieces here are number one, we have an idea that this student is extremely passionate. She's willing to immerse herself deeply in an interest, but that's a really personal element about her story, about her personal qualities. And then the second piece is what she did with that interest. And that was her pursuit of these internships and opportunities at the LA Opera and really um, diving in headfirst to those uh, opportunities so that she could um, really get herself into the opera community. So really admirable uh, efforts by both students and uh, very personal stories. And the first story, again, was what she learned. And this story was a bit more of what you did and I, what she did. And for I, either one is totally acceptable. Uh, the key is to tell a story that is symbolic of your personality. So this one, the Stanford one, she talked about her passion and, and the ways that she developed her interests. And in the last essay, she talked about her perspective on her family life and what she took away from that perspective. So both really great essays, um, you know, models I think you could use uh, as you're thinking about your essays. And by the way, these are not the full essays, I just gave an excerpt of them. Okay, so the second part of the chart that you saw earlier was the impact on personal qualities piece. And the action items here are uh, for the resume. Number one is to think about when you're updating your resume, what you did is the X factor. So what did you do, the action you took? Y is the value that you contributed to the organization. So you can think about your resume and writing the different bullet points and the uh, elements of, of your accomplishments in high school through this lens. And when you use this lens, it really gives the admissions office an idea of who you are as a student and what you've brought to any particular community. Um, and then you also want to think about your personal style, um, how others perceive it, what role do you play in a group, and so forth. You can interview your friends or you can interview uh, teachers if you're comfortable with doing that, or perhaps you already have an idea of what your style is and you can decide it for yourself. Another way to learn about your style is to take a free survey called the VIA Survey of Strengths. Uh, and this is a, a survey you can take uh, with, when you register on the Penn website. So if you type in to Google VIA survey Penn, you should get to a, a site called Authentic Happiness and you can, um, you can register there and take the survey. It takes, about, excuse me, it takes about 20 minutes and you can learn about your strengths through that survey as well. Uh, finally, your major. So you want to look at your academic uh, transcript and really think about how you've done in school. Where have you challenged yourself? 
and that can inform what your major decision will be your major decision about your major so you want to decide your major based on something that you've already done and learned about as opposed to something that you think you want to learn about in the future when you go to college you'll be able to take a variety of subjects um, in all different areas and but at the same time, when you go to college, when you're applying, you want to lead from a place of strength. So if you want to be an engineering major, but you don't have a lot of science classes or a lot of math classes, that's going to be a very tough sell. It's going to be hard to find an engineering school that will really think that you're a strong candidate where you'll have a clear story and that they'll say, okay, this makes sense and you can go into engineering. But if you have, if you're that student and you have a lot of history classes and you decide you want to study history or um, you know gender studies or politics or something like that, that would be a lot easier to sell because you clearly have immersed yourself in history and you have a, a good sense of what that's like and that you could do well in that. So make sure you play to your strengths in, in picking a major as well. So speaking of strengths, let's look at the resume. So these are the resumes. Um, not fully complete, but still helpful from the two students we just saw in the essay exercise. And I am just going to take a sip of water real quick. Okay, so this student, who's the Wellesley student, she had a variety of experiences that really demonstrated her perspective and her impact. So the first and most obvious one was her interest in school theater and plays. This is not the girl who did the LA Opera. This is a different person, the person from Wellesley. And her impact here was clear because she had national recognition. She also had a leadership position uh, as committee leader in her school. So she was able to not only show that she was involved for four years, but that she really had some depth of leadership and experience and went deep enough that she could be recognized on a national level for what she did. Another piece of her profile and her strengths that's really interesting is the debate club. Um, and I would say in tandem with the Gay Straight Alliance and the nonprofit, because all of these three activities show a student who wants to be political, politically active, who is politically aware, um, and we'll have something to say about social issues. And for a school like Wellesley, where that's an important piece, I think this is a real strength for her application. Another piece that's really strong on her application is the global perspective. So she immersed herself in Spanish, so she knows Spanish fluently. And she also went to the Yale Young Global Leaders um, uh, Yale Young Global Leader Summer Program. So in these cases, she was not only just saying like, oh, I'll go on some volunteer trip that, you know, mom and dad pay for and um, go there for a couple weeks and it'll be kind of like a vacation. Uh, she actually got into this really difficult program, um, developed leadership skills, uh, developed a global perspective, and also immersed herself in Spanish, which is not easy to do if you don't come from a home that speaks Spanish. So really strong overall. Um, she was able to demonstrate what she brought because she had all this really great experience from high school. The other student, the one from Stanford, also has a really strong resume, and the nice thing is that there's even more detail on this one. So the, there are a few places that she really made an impact. One was her writing. So she clearly had a lot of writing experience. She talks about um, doing PR writing for the opera. She wrote for, um, you know, this online news and blog. Uh, she got a gold medal in this national Latin exam, so she has a, a real sense of language, a real love of language. Um, and her, uh, her uh, experience was recognized in local media as well. So, you know, not only that she really immersed herself in writing, in opera, uh, tutoring, and so forth, but also that she was recognized by the local media. So she really... Um, stood out because she was able to 
get her her name in the paper, which is really, really impressive. Um, she also was leader in her choir and her drama production crew. So once again, really demonstrating that depth of impact. I would say, you know, this student, there's kind of two kinds of students that these students represent. So this first student, I would say, is kind of an example of a well-rounded student, someone who's done a variety of different clubs and has gotten involved in them. And this student from Stanford is an example of a well-angled student. So in other words, she's gone into great depth on two things. She's gone into great depth on her writing and on her arts involvement and so both are equally strong students but uh, you know one was uh, I guess a, a better fit for Stanford because of the offerings and where she applied versus the student who was uh, interested in Wellesley the student you know is a bit more politically active this one is more involved in the arts and community service so Really, there's a place for students at many campuses, but there are students who can be better fits for certain campuses over others, not because they're necessarily better students, you know, from a numbers perspective or from some, you know, arbitrary um, judgment bar, uh, but, you know, every person is different, just like every institution is different. So one of the keys is really finding what institutions are the right fit for you so that when you apply you have those strengths to really draw on and you can tie those into what the college is looking for. So um, moving on to researching colleges. So to help you with this I want to do a quick tutorial of Guided Path which is the service that I give you access to to help you with your college research. So I am going to minimize this presentation and I'm going to share a different screen um, with you, my web browser. Um, so I'm in Guided Path now and you, your dashboard should look exactly like mine because I'm in the student view. And what you want to do first when you're looking up colleges is go to colleges and then guided search. So you can click on guided search and then once you get into guided search, you can approach your search in one of two ways. You can type in the college's name that you're interested in right up at the top. So we just looked at Stanford, so we can just type in Stanford. And then we click search and that will pop up. And I click on that, I'm gonna get a whole screen dedicated to Stanford. And this is helpful, it will tell me you know, some basic statistics about Stanford. It's gonna tell me about the student population, the basic information about the school, um, and some kind of fun facts. Uh, it'll help me know, you know, how many freshmen come back year after year, when do people graduate, class size, uh, and so forth, and their, their policies. Um, the other nice thing that this helps with is just majors, uh, knowing what majors are offered at the college. So you can go and look, uh, and I'll, when, in a little bit I'll show you um, majors and, their popula and how popular they are, but the nice thing is that these majors on this guide are categorized very similarly to how um, I'll show you them in a little bit. So you can see what the different majors are in each of the categories, which is great. You can also see what the requirements are uh, in terms of your essay. So um, when we get on this page, we'll see that they have you know, two common app essays. There's one, the standard one, of course, the prompt, and then elaborating on extracurricular activity. There's also, there are also some supplement essays. Um, you can see that Stanford has three supplement essays here. So uh, really helpful to track. So if you add this, so we'll just get off of this page. I've actually added Stanford to my college list already. So if I go to um, colleges, I go to my college list. And by the way, you can add, normally there'll be like a little plus sign here uh, when the college is not on your list. You can just click the plus sign to add it to your list. So I'll go to my college list and I will look in here and I'll find that Stanford and Penn have already been added. And I'm also interested in Bates. So if I'm not interested in Bates, I can move it here. If I'm just kind of flat on Stanford, I might put it there. Um, so I have my college list here and I can keep adding. Um, I can also go back to this search function and do some more general search criteria. So let's say that I know kind of generally where I wanna be uh, in the United States. So maybe I will click 
on the different states I'm going to be in. So if I want to stay close to home, maybe for me, I live in Pennsylvania, so I'll click Delaware, I'll click Connecticut, um, and so forth. Uh, and for the location type, maybe I, I, I know I want to be in a city, so I'm just going to click city. So let's just do like a quick, you know, fig search here for your interest. So let's pretend I'm interested in schools in a major city. I don't care about private or public, but maybe I don't want proprietary schools. So just click those two. Um, I don't want any school above 10,000, so I'll pick these three. Um, I will pick also, let's see if there's any other th things of interest here. I think I feel pretty good about this search criteria. I bet I'm gonna get a lot of schools, but let's see how many pop up here. All right, well, let me try this again one more time. Maybe I can get a better, oh, you know what? I have to do, I think I have to do this first. All right, maybe there's no colleges based on that criteria. But in any case, you should be able to find um, some, co oh, that's because I'm still typing in Stanford. Let's see what happens now. Perfect, so that worked. I just had to take out the word Stanford. Um, so I'm getting a ton of colleges here. So I definitely think, you know, 247, I definitely think I could narrow down further. Um, maybe I'm just going to pick certain states that I like. Um, maybe I'm going to pick, you know, just a certain size. I might have too many. Uh, schools here. So, you know, it's, it's a start. And then let's say there's a school I've heard of and I just sort of forgot about like, oh, Occidental College. I've heard of that. That's near Los Angeles. Let me just add that one to my list. Or I can not add it to my list and just click on it and go ahead and take a look inside their profile. The other piece here that you can look at with the profile I didn't mention earlier is they have this FISC rating here. So you can look at sort of an external review of these colleges, the college and what your know, students are saying about it. Um, and also you can take a look at the kind of scholarship programs that are offered, which can be super helpful. Uh, so there's this achievement scholarships, centennial scholarships and so forth. Um, and yeah, this is, can be really useful to you if you're trying to figure out where you want to go and you really want to use um, merit aid. Uh, this is super helpful. Um, so definitely check your, uh, check your scholarship tab here. Uh, uh, there's another great feature here about tours so you can look at some videos about the college and so forth. And that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm sure that was an exciting video, but we'll watch it later. Um, if you care about, you know, athletic life, you can take a look at that and so forth. So lots of options here. So I've got some colleges on my list. You, as I said, you can go to my college list review your selection. If you're really not sure about the kind of criteria you want to use to search for colleges, you don't know, um, kind of what you're looking for. I suggest you go to this survey here called design a college. Um, and as a student in the, this portal, you can take this survey and kind of figure out a little bit more about your preferences. It'll ask you some questions about, you know, your location, the climates you preferred, the distance, academics, and so forth. Um, so I suggest taking this test, even if you have just part of your list, maybe you just know what your reach schools are, your first choice colleges, but you don't know what the other colleges are, this can be really helpful to sort of say like, here's the criteria I'm gonna use to narrow down my target and my safety schools uh, and to, you know, make sure I'm as happy as possible even if those top choice schools don't work out. So, Thank you for uh, walking through that with me. That is the uh, little tour guided path, and I encourage you to you know, check out that uh, for yourself uh, when you're back uh, online there. So we'll go back to research of colleges. So once you have a sense of your strategy, once you kind of know what you're going to do for, you know, you know a little bit more about your story, you know more about your strengths, I highly, highly recommend using the methodology I shared with you on an earlier webinar. So this is a methodology to research specific schools. 
And what you want to do is kind of go to four different pages. So one is the strategic plan. So every university will have some kind of strategic plan by the president or the dean or the chancellor, whoever the leader is of the school. And that person should lay out their priorities or their, their hopes over the next several years in the life of the college. Those priorities will give you a sense of what they're looking for. So for example, a lot of colleges will say, global engagement. So the young lady we saw earlier from Wellesley, for example, could look at that and say, oh, I've done a lot of global work. This might be a good place for me to look at college. Another, another uh, element would be um, community engagement. So that would be things like community service, service learning, um, ways that the college is trying to partner with the cities in order to improve life there. So if you are a student with community service and there's a college that has that kind of pillar in their strategic plan, that college could be a fit for you or the college might look more favorably upon you as being somewhat more service oriented versus someone who's not. The second thing is the mission statement or school motto. So this is the document or the phrase that you'll find on the school's website that has a brief capture of the school's character, history, and culture. And this can give you a sense of what the, just sort of the energy is on campus. And I'd be curious if any of you who read this and go visit campus, if you feel that energy when you, when you go to visit. The third is the curriculum or academic unit. So that's the academic major and looking at what the faculty are, are doing in terms of their research, looking at what the structure of the coursework is, what coursework is required, is there a lot of required coursework and are you interested in that coursework or is there a lot of flexibility and is that favorable to you? So looking at those kinds of elements will help you see you know, if it's a right fit for you academically. Finally, and this is sort of the hardest one to research, uh, are the donations. So um, once you know your strategy and your strengths, you want to lead from those strengths to say that you want to continue with those uh, while in college. And you can find related donations to those strengths. So for the young lady who was at Stanford, um, she was really interested in writing. So she should look for, you know, writing across the curriculum type of donations. Um, she could look for um, arts donations, if there's a new, you know, theater center or, you know, entertainment complex or something like that, those are all things that she could look at to see, oh, maybe they're going to be interested in bringing more performing arts students to this campus. Um, and for the other uh, young lady who was very politically active, she'd, she'd want to look for uh, donations related to history or politics or economics, um, elements of her that, that really underlie her interests. Uh, and that, so that's something you can do for your ambitions as well. Okay, so now we're going to walk through different methods uh, for choosing a major. Um, and really, I'm giving you some really practical tips here. I'm not going to um, be as flowery as some counselors might be because I think um, choosing a major is a really uh, important and, I mean, in fact, critical element of your, of your strategy. You have to anchor your strategy in some kind of major. Um, you have to be able to demonstrate your strengths in an academic subject in order to explain why you want to do a major. And also, a major helps the colleges to see you on campus. Oh, I see that this would this student would be great in the history department, or this student would be a great business student. Um, and you have to lead from that place of strength. So if you've done really well in, in certain subjects, as I mentioned, that's a really good place to start. Um, and thinking about you know your transcript. So you know, and be really honest. You know, where have you done well and where have you struggled in, in your studies? Um, and you want to be able to make the case that you can continue to do well in college because colleges want, ultimately want students to come to campus. They want them to graduate and succeed in life because that ultimately will feed the college and, you know, build the circle of alumni and, and future students. So, you know, make sure when you choose a major, it's not just something that, you know, mom, dad, or your friend said, um, oh, this is a really lucrative major, this is a really in-demand major. If you have a lot of classes and strengths in that area and you think you could do well, um, then you probably have a story to tell, but if you just know about it and don't know a lot about it, haven't done any classes in the subject, it's going to be hard for you to sell yourself uh, to do that major. So really, you know, when you get to college, you can always change majors. So the best thing to do is to look at where you've done well and start with that as an academic major. Some students will ask me about going undecided, and it's definitely an option, but I think it's a lot harder for you as the applicant to have 
um, influence over how you're perceived when you're not going in with a set decided major. When you're going in kind of, you know, hey, I'm open to anything in this general area, that's, you know, that's all well and good, but it's a little bit harder to decipher, you know, what kind of student you're going to be, um, what you're really going to do, and to ensure that you'd really take advantage of all the resources the college has. So my suggestion is always to go in with a major if you can, figure out what your basic interests are. The next piece is to think about the demand for certain majors. So maybe you're someone who's excelled at all the academic subjects that you've um, been part of, but you haven't really found one interest or another. One way to navigate this is to look at the competitiveness of these majors and think about getting an edge by selecting a major that's less popular. So I didn't go, um, all the way down the list, but I went pretty far down here. And the most popular, okay, now I'm gonna give you some practical methods for choosing a major. Looking at the academics of a major uh, and what you're interested in is important element, it's important way to intuit, to have intuition around, what you should study, but there are a lot of other things that you really need to be thinking about when you pick a major, and I'm gonna give you a few of those today. So the first is your academic portfolio. Uh, your looking at your transcript, looking at any summer work you've done, really be honest with yourself about, you know, where have you done well, and where has it been a struggle for you academically? Um, you know, for a student who says that he or she wants to study engineering, for example, have they had a lot of science classes? Have they done really well in those science classes? Have they challenged themselves as much as others at their, as their high school has um, in order to demonstrate that they have um, exceptional or excellent ability in the sciences? Um, if the answer to that is no, then I would suggest a student look at a different major that uh, is maybe more in line with their interests uh, or uh, to choose a general science major and perhaps not an engineering major. So uh, those are elements you can look at with your counselor. He or she, uh, the counselor at your high school that is, he or she will know what other students have done in the past and where they've gone and give you an idea realistically of what majors might be a fit for you. So that's an important look and perhaps you've already done that and have picked your major. Uh, another way to pick your major is a very general view. So if you've done really well in a lot of subjects, let's say you have all A's or close to all A's, um, you can think about getting a competitive edge at uh, the more selective colleges by picking a subject like uh, area, ethnic, cultural, gender, or group studies. So this is a subject that has far fewer students in it than a subject like business, which is the most competitive or one of the most competitive majors out there in terms of sheer volume of students and sheer numbers of people applying to these majors. So I would say if you're interested in any of the, the studies that are kind of lower down on the list, that you really think about um, the possibility of going into that. You don't want to just go into something because it's undersubscribed, but Again, if you're really, really unsure, this could be kind of a tiebreaker for you to look at these numbers and look at towards the bottom of the list and say, is this the initial major I want to at least go in with to give myself um, an edge, to give myself a story, to craft a story around this major to say why I'm interested in it and look at the transferable strengths I'm bringing to it? Or do I want to go with one of these more popular majors? And if I go with the more popular major, what story do I have to show academically, extracurricularly, and personally to really show that this is my interest and I will do really well in the subject? Finally, I would say to also check what the prospects for employment are with a bachelor's degree in whatever topic you're interested in. It. So I provided the website down below, this VLS data website, um, and I'll give you the link at the end as well. But this is a really great website to look at what jobs require what kind of education and what you can be expected to pay and approximately how many years of experience you need. So what I did here was I sorted by bachelor's degree and I sorted by how much work experience you need. So I only picked bachelor's degree, no work experience. And this is not the full comprehensive list. There were a lot of other um, 
jobs on this list that were high paying, I just show the highest paying one. So I suggest go on that list, look at what jobs may be interesting to you that require a bachelor's degree. If the job you want um, requires more than a bachelor's degree, it's something you want to think about when you're looking at majors. So maybe you do a foundational major in you know politics, let's say, if you want to go into law, um, or you know if you want to go into medicine, you do a foundational major in bio in biology. Um, so those are all elements to look at. Uh, the BLS data can be super useful. Now we had an interview with Ethan Sir, who's a college essay guy. He wrote a book called College Essay Essentials, and I've provided all of you with a copy. If you haven't received yours for some reason, please send me an email and let me know that you haven't received your copy. Um, I, am, uh, I was really pleased to welcome Ethan last night. He answered a variety of questions for the class, um, some of which were submitted by you and some of which um, I came up with. So the first question I asked Ethan was about how students should start the process of essay writing. You know, you may have your essay, you may not. And he suggested that you go into his book and look at the short answer exercises, that those can provide you with some great um, data points to think about uh, what do you want to write about for your essay and how can you get started with uh, a few small stories that will build on your foundation. Uh, the next question I asked him was about essay advice for students who haven't finalized their major or schools. Um, and what he said there was to find challenges. So I had a great interview last night with Ethan Sawyer, who's the college essay guy. And he gave students a variety of tips and tricks. So I'll go through the questions I asked him and a bit about what he said. So the first question I asked him was about the process of essay writing and how to start. Um, so a lot of you may have nothing for your essay. Some of you may have maybe a draft of your essay. So when you're first at the start, Ethan recommends that you go into the book and you look at the short answer exercises. Those will provide you with some helpful feedback points on what stories will work well for you and what are some different elements of your background that you can write about. Um, the next question I asked Ethan was about essay advice uh, and what essay advice he has for students who haven't finalized their major or schools. Um, and he talks about the two different kinds of essays. He talks about essays for students who have had challenges and essays for students who have not had challenges in their life. So he calls them B and type B and type D essays. So um, you wanna think about your background. Have you had a lot of challenges in your life? Have you not? And pick the type of essay that corresponds with your level of personal challenge in your life. The third question I asked Ethan was talking about what helps people be unique and to stand out. And one of you asked, what are, tics, what are the tricks and tips to write a really good college essay to set me apart from other applicants? And what Ethan recommends is that you do a deep dive into your core values. So for Ethan, those are vulnerability, helping others, and so forth. And for you, it might be very different. So thinking about what are the values that really drive you as you um, have gone through life, and those values are important to incorporate in your essay. And let me also add, to later match you to a college that would share your values as well. Um, the next question I asked Ethan was uh, about his book uh, and how to go through it, how to make the most of it. And what Ethan said was that, you know, you could take a, two to three hours and look through the book and really, you know, look at the essays, review uh, what other students have done, what's worked and why that's worked, and also analyze that for yourself about why these essays have been really um, impactful in the admissions committee. And I'm, I'm sure if you read these essays, you'll find that some of them are really moving. Um, and so, you know, to make the best use of the book, he suggests that, and if not, he just suggests going piece by piece, so trying the different exercises in the book, seeing which ones fit, and as we go through this class, particularly, we will go through different exercises together, so you can get a start on your essay in just a couple of weeks from now, and really uh, pack some great personal elements into it. So thanks again to Ethan, and thanks to all of you for uh, listening to my recap here. So in terms of the next steps, so what I'm recommending for you all for assignments are to, for you to think about your major again. I've given you a framework for um, you know, reviewing your major choice, for thinking about what major that's a strength for you. Um, and it doesn't have to be your final major for your college application, but 
you know, I suggest you have kind of a draft of a couple of different majors that you start to, you know, really hone in on and research as you're looking at colleges that you find interesting. Uh, I'd also say to review overall your, your life story. Um, so you can use Ethan's book to do that. Uh, you can also just think generally about um, what strengths you have brought the uh, the uh, story piece and the strengths piece and how you have um, you know really navigated your life circumstances and what you've done with what you've been provided in school and outside the third I would say is to go onto guided path which is the uh, website where I gave you a tutorial earlier fill out your own information including your GPA and test scores and then you can start to stack up um, where you fall with respect to the different colleges so where do your grades and your tests fall are you within the range so you can start thinking about you know reach schools match schools and safety schools and you also you know can go into guided path and add some schools to your list just to start doing some comparisons um, I also suggest you take and this is you know definitely optional but the design a college survey that I showed you is really helpful for thinking about you know, your safety schools, your target schools, or if you don't have any schools at all on your list, you can start to narrow down what criteria you're, go you're going to use by that survey. So I would say take that survey if you have time. Uh, looking ahead to next week in terms of what we'll cover, we're going to cover how to assess your chances and, and you know, gear us up to start the essay. So uh, we'll talk about early decision, early action strategy. We'll talk about uh, how to use Naviance and admits you to see where you'll stack up compared to others in the applicant pool to sort of make some educated choices about where to apply and where not to apply. Uh, we'll also talk about social media and your portfolio. So how do you uh, project uh, your the image that you want to on, on the web and through your application through supplemental materials. And we'll talk about uh, how to start our essays then. Uh, I want to, uh, I didn't get many questions last night. I had a couple questions in advance, but I do want to re-encourage everyone that, you know, this class, this boot camp is designed to be uh, participative. And I know that you're really busy and I don't want to I'll put uh, undue responsibility or pressure on you, but I want to encourage you to participate more uh, so that this class can be super tailored to what you're needing. Um, I'm covering the material I think is important, but I don't know what's on your mind all the time. So I would love to know more about what's on your mind. And so I'll, I'll continue to survey you uh, every week uh, to learn more about your preferences and uh, encourage you to ask questions as we're going through the material as well. Um, I want to thank you all again for participating and thank you for uh, listening to this webinar on demand. Have a good day, evening, or afternoon, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.